All right, so we are going to uh, solve another example where we have an argument uh, with three premises and this is the conclusion. So how do we prove it? Um, well, I'm going to prove it with indirect derivation. So let me note the conclusion, not P or Q. So that means I am going to start with numbering the premises. All right. And then, um, because I am going to prove it with direct, uh, indirect derivation, in line four, I am going to assume the negation of my uh, conclusion. All right, so this is assumption for indirect derivation. Very good. So this is double negation, so therefore P or Q must be true. Uh, double negation of line four. Very good. What else? Well, I can't really do much more than this. So I need a, another piece of uh, uh, um, information. So now what I would like to prove is that if this is true, all right, I mean, line four and line five are true, well, then P must be true. So new conclusion, uh, new conclusion. Uh, I'm not going to use it. I mean, the, uh, my, my conclusion is this, but this new conclusion is a conclusion that I am going to use to prove my uh, sort of uh, main conclusion. So the new conclusion is that P is true. So how am I going to prove that? So I'm going to open a new box. And in line six, I'm going to uh, negate my assumption uh, statement, not P. So this is assumption for indirect derivation. All right, so not P is also true. Very well. So in line seven, um, B, so this is very important. Everything before line six are true. This is what we assume, all right? I mean, I know this may not be true, okay? I assumed it. Uh, it's not like the premises. But once I came to line six, I assumed that everything before line six are true, all right? So under those assumptions is not P, cannot P be, true, be a true statement. So let's see. If it is not, I'm going to get a contradiction. So in line seven, I'm going to use P or Q and not P. So this is basically MTP. Uh, that means Q must be true. MTP, thanks to arguments in line five and six. All right. So once I have Q, well, I can always say, uh, well, I can use three and seven, three and seven, and this is modus ponens, so uh, S must be true. All right, very well. What else? Well, line nine, so this is R or S, so add R to this statement. So this is just addition to the statement in line eight. So R or S must be true, very well. I think you can see the contradiction that I am getting at. So not R or S. This is just repetition. Repeat. Repeat line one. So what I get is a contradiction. All right. So what is the cause of this contradiction? Well, it cannot be this because this is premise number one and I know that it is true. It cannot be this R or S because this is just an addition to the argument in line eight. So if this is true, this must be true. Very well. Well, uh, the, the line eight cannot be wrong because this is a derivation of line three and, and seven. So if uh, I know that three is definitely correct. so. Sorry, if seven is uh, true, then eight must be true. All right, so it's uh, the blame is basically going uh, 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 all the way up. So can Q be the one to blame? Well, I mean, Q depends on five and six. So uh, uh, if five is true, which I assume to be, and if six is true, well, then this must be uh, true. So this can't be the one to blame. And therefore, the blame must be this, because I assume everything up until this point is true. So if there is something wrong here, which I have, it's a contradiction, then this not P must be false. So under these assumptions, right? 
So maybe if I didn't have this assumption, not P may be true, but I already made it. So given this assumption, not P cannot be true. So it's false. That means P is true. So I closed it. Now I'm in line six. Uh, P is true. Thanks to indirect derivation between the arguments six to 10. All right, so once I have P, what do I have? Well, oh, I'm sorry, this is not line six. I mean, you can't jump all the way from here to here. Well, if you like, you can, because the thing is, from now on, once I close this box, this subproof, I can actually just cross this box, everything in between, because I can no longer use those statements because they are not correct. Because remember, they were correct conditional on not P being true. But it's not true, so therefore everything here, well, except this one because it's just a repetition, everything here um, is, is, is false, all right? So therefore, I can't use them. However, I can use one, two, three, four, five still, and 11 because I, could, I, I, I haven't yet closed this uh, assumption for uh, indirect derivation. All right, so once I have 11, I have 12, where P and P and R, so modus ponens, R must be true. So the modus ponens between the arguments two and 11. All right, so P is true, R is true. Well, again, R or S. So in line 13, I just add S to this statement. So this is addition to the statement in line 12. And then <clears throat> I just repeat my first argument or premise, R or S. So this is a repeat of line one. So I have a contradiction. Remember, I made this assumption for indirect derivation and I got a contradiction. So therefore, the, the problem has to be arising because of this assumption, because everything here is correct a conditional on a previous assumptions are being correct. And so this cannot be correct. Uh, I keep saying correct, but I mean true. So this must be false. Hence, its negation must be true. So therefore, I close this. Uh, but let me just write it here. 15. I have concluded that uh, not P or Q is true thanks to indirect derivation between the arguments in line four to all the way to 14, all right? So that was the conclusion I was trying to get and I got that conclusion. So that's the proof and hence this argument is a valid argument.